Hi, this is Yesenia and Sam. And you're watching ONT Now. Hey, Sam. Hi, Yesenia. How are you doing today? Good. I am super excited about today's episode. We have a uh, good friend of mine that I worked with for many years, Master Gardener and Urban Farmer Gregory Bratton here with us today. Welcome, Gregory. Hey, thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah. No, my pleasure. I know we've been trying to get you on for at least a week or so, and you've been very, very busy. Yeah. So I'm glad you. But I'm very it interested on. in this topic also too. So I'm very happy to have you here. He's excited. He's yeah. really looking forward to his garden. So, so <laughs> you know. So I mean, not again. We're, the show's not too long, but just uh, I'd like to hear. First of all, how did you get those titles? And what was your start in gardening? Like, how did it start for you? What, how are you here today with holding that kind of title? Okay, I started 10 years ago here in South Chicago with uh, a young lady named Dinah Romeris uh, with Healthy Southeast Chicago. We created gardens uh, because uh, we became a food desert. At one time, this corner of Chicago was the richest corner of Chicago, meaning that it's the old steel mill mm -hmm. district. Sure. And from 82nd and uh, Buffalo, there was a two and a quarter mile walk to the nearest grocery store. Wow. Mm -hmm. Which would have been a four and a half mile trip, round trip, just to put a bell pepper on your table. Oh, wow. my goodness. Yeah, that is, that, that is definitely, um, it was a, a huge problem here in the area. And, you know, I am amazed to hear that you have close to, what, 21, is it? 21 in, 21 in the one? South Chicago and uh, South Shore area. That is amazing. How many gardens do you have total? Eighty six. Eighty six. Wow. Where do you find that? Where do you find all the time? I mean, that that's got that's a lot of passion to have eighty six lots. Where is everything? Are they all producing all all at the yes, same time? Yes, they are producing. What we did this year was we kind of cut them up, whereas uh, a lot of the lots that I uh, I gained through the different aldermans and. And when they were selling the lots for a dollar, sure, yeah. where we do crops on some of the lots, where right. we grow one thing okay. on the complete lot. Okay. So uh, through the, our organization, which is Chicago Intergenerational Growing Project, Chicago we have Chicago-wide uh, volunteers, okay. such as uh, the universities. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a lot of these, um, because I know during the summer, too, you were able to get some kids... I, I don't even remember what the program is where they the youth program where they pay them right yes the city of Chicago so that's good uh, we did different uh, campaigns mm -hmm. of that we did uh, putting Illinois back to yes. work mm -hmm. uh, youth shock Chicago mm -hmm. ready ready youth Chicago and uh, one summer Chicago and some yeah. and sometimes we have had as high as uh, 500 children on one lot when we did wow. Garden Town over on 97th and Marquette. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And that's a beautiful thing because not only are you um, teaching these kids yeah. how to grow their own food and how to maintain themselves in a healthy way, you're giving them something productive to do sure. um, when there's not a lot of programs for them throughout the summer. Um, sometimes they have nowhere to go during the summer. And... Get some of these kids are getting employed. Yeah, and, and repurposing money. the land really exactly. too. I mean, this is this. Otherwise, these are like unused lots, right? You're you're yes. making yes. beautiful things out of unused areas where normally people would just dump on. Yeah, you know. So that's you're cleaning Chicago one lot at a time. Right. No, I never of, I never thought about yeah, it. Yeah, that's like that's that. actually that's actually really good. And not just that, but 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 it's generating. Um, something that's nurturing others too you know like she said and not just in in something to do but in healthy and putting good things in their body so that's that's great but you know obviously out here we know that um a lot of the projects kind of got delayed because the land is a little dirty right let, let, contaminated we should say what, what is your experience in having to deal with that well 90 percent of the lots that's 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 here were at one time had buildings on them. Okay. And when you tear the buildings down, they don't take all the building away, they bury it. Yeah. And that consists of uh, a uh, 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 possibility of contamination. Mm -hmm. So instead of disturbing the contamination, uh, which we could never get rid of the contamination, but we can get rid of the threat of the contamination, we build a barrier and we start building from there. Nice. By understanding the plants, such as quickly, uh, we need two feet of uh, roof row. 
So we automatically put two feet of clay over this contamination at first. Okay. And understand that this clay gets hot, so we have to put another barrier of something that keeps this clay moist. Wow. So it doesn't crack where contamination can seep up. But understand we have to have two feet of root growth. So we put another four feet of soil over the two feet, the four feet of clay, two feet of wood chips. Yeah. And that eliminates the threat. Wow. And it's a wonder, no wonder why I was never able to grow tomatoes <laughs> at home. You know, you think you just put that's a seed in some can. dirt. <laughs> and um, there you go. But I guess that's kind of where that, that your, your, your title comes from, right? It's like understanding particular plants, how they grow, what they need, what kind of, how they root and how they exist with each other, right? Like coexisting. Yeah, well, when I said master gardener, I'm yeah. not just a master gardener. I'm a master gardener by degree. I went to Georgia State University. I have both my masters. Wow. I have one in horticulture and one in agriculture. That is amazing. Good for you. That's yeah. awesome. And, and it's great that you're sharing mm -hmm. that, yeah, that skill knowledge. and that talent with the, with the community, too. Yes. So um, what, what's the most exotic thing you're, you're, you've grown or you're growing? Like, what's the craziest thing you've, I, I mean? Honestly? Yeah. I grow. I'm still growing it. Okay. I have a banana tree in a five-gallon bucket. A banana tree? Yeah. A <gasps> banana tree. I have to see this. Where is it? At uh, my can, house. Can we go to? You know, we need to do an on-site. <laughs> yeah. Um, episode where we where you take us no and doubt. you show us. Um, It'd be my pleasure. That would be so awesome. Are, are you we'll growing any avocados? At work. I can I have grown. Them. Oh. I mean, there's no. You mm. know, it's see people say. Green thumb, like you say, you can't grow. Yeah. You can grow anything you want to grow if you know the knowledge. I have a workshop called When, Where, Why, and Why Not mm -hmm. okay. that teaches you how to grow, where to grow, when to grow, and what not to grow. Gotcha. Okay. I need that class. I yeah. definitely want to um, get into that and how to start my garden, so I'm going to have to talk to you about that. Yeah. Another thing that I wanted to um, talk a little bit about is the two gardens that you are in the process of renaming or you wanted no, to name uh, landmark landmark okay yes. tell us a little bit about that and that's the laquan mcdonald community garden and the trayvon martin community urban farm okay, okay. both are at uh 8452 south escanaba okay and uh the laquan mcdonald garden has existed four years now and within the four years it's it's been been in existence it's grown over 250 pounds of vegetables wow. through the community. Uh, the two years that the, uh, the Trayvon Martin Garden has grown, uh, we ran into a little problem this year because we have a cottonwood tree in the yard, and every two years it drops its load. Mm. Mm. So it dropped its load this year, which mm. contaminated our soil. Oh, wow. So we had to... Kind of start from scratch? Kind yeah, of we had to start from scratch, okay. mid-season. Mm -hmm. But now we have uh, the Haitian squash, which is the first time we ever grow one here in Chicago. And that's the Haitian squash? Yes, it's called a Jumu. It's a J-U-M-U. Mm -hmm. J-U-M-U. Wow. So, you know, how many pounds did you say you, you grew? Uh, 200, was it 200 pounds of uh, vegetables? vegetables? Yes. Uh, 250 250 pounds. pounds. Where do all these vegetables go? Yeah. Uh, Where do they go? We, we donate them to the uh, Domestic Violence Center. Wow. The, uh, the community. And as, uh, as the year winds mm -hmm. around, we do our Feed the Hungry program, Feed oh, the wow. Hungry Day. Okay. Where last year mm -hmm. we fed over 400 warm meals mm -hmm. from the garden mm -hmm. and volunteers. That is beautiful. Are you having huh. one this year? Yes, October the 13th. October the 13th. Okay, October the 13th. That's the 12th anniversary yes. of this? Yes, uh, the 12th anniversary. And where is it going to be located? 8452 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. South Escanaba, yeah. okay. and it's from 10 to 2. Okay, to two. we'll definitely that would, share that. Yeah, that definitely would be nice to maybe even get some people that are um, benefit yeah. from these events um, and say a little bit about what it means to them. Because this is a beautiful work that you're doing. You're feeding families. Like I said, you're cleaning Chicago one lot at a time, growing uh, the knowledge of these kids and putting them to work. It's just amazing work that you do. And, and one, po one important thing I must mention is sure. all organic. Yes. All organic. All organic. Yes. Well, thank so no you Monsanto so much, Monsanto Gregory. Issues, none of that craziness no. that we're dealing with over here. No. Well, I, you know what? Uh, yeah. As, thank you mm -hmm. very much. I mean, it's very informative. Actually, there's so much more information that, that, that we would like to hear from you. I hope that you can visit us again. 
Yes, please, I will. Please. Yeah. And, and we'll, we would love to visit you. Yeah, we're definitely going to come out to some of your sites and yes. look at some of the progress that's going on and uh, have some fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe we can even do a, um, a little short mini workshop. Um, yeah, where we can bring people here and you can kind of talk about you know, growing and how that benefits yes. people and all of that. We'll yes. definitely have to talk some more because this is all amazing information that we need to yeah. hear, hear You know again. what, because it's just like another thing where I've lived in this community for, for nearly all of my life and I pass these gardens all the time. It's just one more thing that, that uh, I think a lot of people kind of don't know mm -hmm. what's going on. So thank you very much for sharing because mm -hmm. now I know what these places are and, and uh, uh, it's just really nice to know yes. that we have these kind of things. These the hidden gems in hidden the southeast gems. side of Chicago. That's right. Thank you. Well, thanks again, Gregory. We, it was a pleasure to have you and like I said, I, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to have you again. Yes. Thank you again, Gregory. It's nice seeing you again. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thank you. This is ONT Now. Here we go again.